Please don't push me. Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to flat bush B. Now they got heat on their feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the street, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me. Then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh. That's less me. SAT from preaching. Can't test me. Atheists are now believing. That bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chasing. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing. Any of the relationships that y'all changing. We rearranging. Making the shame shift. Giving Satan back what's his. That's the blame shift. Rise up and walk commands. That's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life That's the game shift All on your shoe man The rest is manure man I'm dying daily So I rise up a purer man Pressing B daily So my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood So my sins down the sewer man Yeah So press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, Yeah So press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be Good morning to you, good morning to you, good morning dear people, good morning to you. Uh, somebody is saying there's no audio, but there must be audio. Y'all don't hear us? Yeah. Y'all gotta be hearing us right now, right? It's gotta be a thing. Um, I love you guys so much, you. and uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen. You look great. Thank you. You feel great. Thank you. I do. I As do. a friend, I, I feel the kids call it. Uh, they're saying aura. Oh, there's an aura your, now. Your aura's right. My aura is right. Man, it's a, it's crazy how words, how words just kind of uh go in and on, in and on. What what in and out? Words just come in and out. They just cycle in and out. Um, anyway, welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Tim Ross. I love you guys so much. I'm so grateful you are here. Shout out uh, to all of my B-siders. Thank you for pressing B. If you haven't pressed B yet, what are you doing? Um, download the app, subscribe, um, and just be with us. Rock with us. I want to shout out to everybody that's in the Discord chat right now. In the chateau! Woo! I'm so grateful that you all have joined us today and that you are a part of that community. Shout out to everybody in YouTube live. Aha. We are live and direct. We will bring it to your set. I got now. I don't care who got next. Hey. Rapper slash exec Cordell Stewart. Oh, I always stop right there. Not that the next words are uh, expletives or anything, but I don't know. I just always stop right there. Anyway, um, I love you guys and I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm just happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. I don't, hey. <laughs> I don't know why I said that like that. I am so happy to be here. Um, I am... Um, I am... Uh, I'm just... I'm, I had a good weekend, man. I had a good therapy session Friday. It it it, it led to a little... It, it led to a breakthrough. I, ca I can't even call it a little. It led to a breakthrough. And, and it's got me... F it's, Man, when you get the right perspective on something, when the Holy Spirit gives you the right perspective on something, ooh, it could just it could just set you free. So freedom vibes. Ah, uh, yeah, man, I'm feeling free, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling free, and um, we just out here, we just out here. Um, Discord, how y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? Good to see you, Monique, Vic Loves, ninety one, C J, Brianna Nicole. Saint Samantha, let's go, Saint Samantha. Chris Styles, let's go. Karen five two one, that's what I'm talking about. What's up, Karen? And Karen got G Karen's thumbnail is a picture of me and her at the launch, the launch event. At the launch event, so I love you, girl. Andrea P, Tyree, Nick Alexander. Oh, now y'all just jumping in. Leanne, I love you. Uh, learning eighty eighty one. Willie Clay, Jay or Jai or J. Something, Michaela, Jalon, uh, not Oscar, Rashawn Mosley. We out ya. Yeah. Let's go. I love y'all so much. And then and then on on the um on YouTube, I can't really. I don't see the um how come I don't I don't see the chat? You just gotta believe, brother. I, <laughs> you gotta probably get out and go back. Gotta, okay, that, that's probably what it is. 
um, user yeah. error. It's right here. It's brother. a user error. Booyah. Amen. What's up, Rupert Solomon? What's cracking? Joshua Riggins, mm -hmm. Dina, Tashana, Rupert, Princess, Kataria, uh, uh, Reed, Shelly, Bella. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, 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 Nathan just blew his nose. That wasn't the that wasn't a show for our people. <laughs> Alexander Tafini, Salinda, uh, Renetta, Vida, Chelsea. Are you a fan of the show far? Third, um, Chioma, Chioma. Man, that name is just a beautiful African name. She's the best. Uh, Jesse, um, Sharon, Malik, Michelle, Kivan, Nawazi. Let's go from Pretoria, South Africa. What's popping? Yeah, Cheryl, Maureen. Hello from France. Okay, Stand, rise up, France. Let's go. Wee oui, wee. Oui. I love you, Anthony Chevelle. I love y'all. Anyway, we out here. Okay, I did my roll call. I did my romper room thing. Okay, we out here in these streets. We in here. We locked in for at least two hours, at least. I say at least, because you know, sometime it be getting good up in the chat, and then the questions start getting good, and then we start vibing, and then we start talking, and it'd be all good. Anyway, I love doing, A hey, Heath Blair just put the shofar in, just put the, <laughs> hey, Discord be popping off. <laughs> Discord, we can do stuff in Discord we cannot do on YouTube. Um, that ain't even promotional. I'm just like, to, to, to show a clip. <laughs> Leanne and this green frog, this green frog dancing. Everybody join the Discord. Uh, we're chatting in there as well. Yes, sir. Yo, yo, that no, but <laughs> we're not just we're not just chatting. The gift game and the meme game goes crazy meme in team, Discord. Bro. Meme team, meme team, meme team. The meme team in Discord is wild. Willie, I agree with you. That was very very quick. Uh, so 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 clearly this is an interactive pod, right? Like, let's be clear on that. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I am, I am, um, I'm happy to be with you locked in for at least the next two hours. I'm grateful that we get to do life together. Let me just say that, um, from the time basement started, it was about, um, sitting down and talking about what it's like to be a believer in Jesus and, uh, live in the world that we live in. We are in the world. We are not of the world. We were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. We were born again into salvation, shaped into, shaped into uh, being saints through a sanctification process. We were made righteous by Jesus Christ. And then what does that mean to, after you hear the dope sermon on Sunday, forget Monday morning, Sunday night. How do you put... How do, I, how do I apply this message to my life? If I'm a single mama with three kids, how do I take what the, 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 the pastor sermonized on Sunday and make it something applicable to my life on Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Like, we got to live it out. There's 365 days in a calendar year. There are 366 in a leap year. There, there are 52 Sundays. In a calendar year, which leaves 313 days between Sundays to live life. Make no mistake that the amount of uh, days eclipses the amount of Sundays. I mean, we're, 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 we're talking, my math is, I'm not the math genius. So we're, we're talking six times more, more days of the week than we are Sundays. Not that Sunday isn't a day of the week, but you get what I'm saying. God left us six times, six times as many days to process these sermons as the sermons themselves. Which means that it, it, it would behoove us to break down how do I actually live according to these guidelines, these principles, these precepts, these commands that are not changeable? How is my sex and sexuality 
going to navigate being under the lordship of Jesus Christ, practically speaking, on a day-to-day -day basis? How do I love my neighbor as myself? How do I love my enemies? How do I love those and pray for those that despitefully use me and that hate me? How do I practically do that? How do I stay faithful to my wife? How do I stay faithful to my husband? How do I love my kids? How do I go to a job that I hate every single day but honor God while doing my work underneath a whack manager? Like, we're just talking about the practical stuff. I just paid five figures in taxes. <laughs> last week, last week, last, last year, I spent almost six figures in taxes. In taxes, people. How do I render under Caesar what is Caesar's and not be mad at Caesar? <laughs> I mean, that, that's annoying. Hey, dog. That's a lot of money. The government wants this money, man. Uncle Sammy wants his money, man. Can I submit something to you before, How before your we boy. move on? Yeah, man. We just we chilling. could we could move the basement headquarters to uh was it Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Save on taxes, brother. What? Have, have an island vibe. We can all move to Puerto Rico together, do the podcast out there, catch a vibe, catch a flight, toes in the sand. Is it, there there's a um th there's a tax break? Major. We'll save way more money out there. Oh, really? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'm super serious. Better too. better that? Still a part of America. Short flight. See? Si. Hop into Miami, catch a quick Cuban you, sandwich. There's a break on taxes? Hey, man, brother. Hey, dog. Hey. You might be saying something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I love hey, you, Lord. Listen. Let me let, let me say this. <laughs> when you when you come out of nonprofit. And and you're a for-profit entity. Listen, now now let me say this: I was in nonprofit for all of my all of my adult life in ministry. I've I've had a nonprofit, and nonprofits are amazing. Um, and ministries uh, that operate in nonprofits, obviously, I don't have a problem with it because uh, I ran one for years and years and years. But I tell you what, paying these taxes, I'm I'm here for paying these taxes. I know I know it might sound like a thing, but um, uh, I do not have the restrictions and stipulations that were in place when I was when I was in a nonprofit. Um, uh, now that I'm now that I'm in a, a for profit, I just don't have the restrictions and stipulations. I, I'm actually the, I'm actually able to be more generous in the now that I'm in a for profit than I even was in a nonprofit. And nobody can, and, and, and can't nobody say nothing about what I want to give to, how I want to give to it, when I want to give to it, because I pay my taxes. Amen. That's why I was able to take y'all to uh, Australia last year. That was fun. That was amazing. Because it's a for profit. Life changing. If it was a non profit, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Y'all didn't work for Embassy City? So, you know what I'm saying? If I was a pastor, I wouldn't have been able to take my production team from the podcast because the podcast wasn't a part of the church. Mm -hmm. It was something, You know what I'm saying? So there's all these nonprofit lines and guidelines that need to be adhered to. And if you're in a nonprofit, you need to adhere to those guidelines. But let me tell you about this liberty I feel. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. Yo. Freedom. I'm... Uh, it's 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 a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So, um, I love you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. And uh, what are we getting into today? What 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 what's the vibe? What what we can... we we got we come out here with our with our um with our surfboard, mm -hmm. right? And we see what tide is coming in, and we go out and catch some waves. Yo, y'all, <laughs> no, hey, dude. Yo, Discord. I, 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 this might, th this might be a really bad. <laughs> this, so this, this might be a really That's bad me. pod. That's me, bro. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is gonna be a really bad pod for uh, just those on Spotify and and iTunes, Apple, because y'all need to get into Discord. Oh my God. The, the <laughs> oh gosh. 
if y'all can see the memes that are popping up on Discord right now, <laughs> yo, this, this it, no, go back down. It's it's no no go back up. It's Elmo. It is Elmo. <laughs> the fire Elmo. It's this tormented Elmo <laughs> who looks like he's fallen into the pit of Hades. Arms up with the <laughs> caption freedom. But it looks like he's being burned eternally. Almost delusional, brother. In the fires of Mordor. It's wild, fam. Anyway, um, no, nah, like, like, like what are we what are, what are we what are we feeling today? What what's the what's in the air? Well what's I, ha the I have a question. Question. So in regards to um, do you keep up at all with any of the rap or hip hop of today, the new guys? Um, it, it hits my radar a little bit. So back then, if you made a diss, yep. you're putting your life on the line. You make a diss, yep. you might die, right? That's no. 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 You make a diss, you're fine. No. Okay. So, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, let, okay. Yeah, let's yeah, ride yeah, this wave yeah, for yeah, a minute, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, you got to re you gotta remember where battle rapping originated, mm -hmm. right? Battle rapping originated in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Everybody was sizing up, and it was about let's see who has the best lyrical okay. ability. Yep. It, it was about really being like a true MC. You, remember, nobody back then wanted to rip. MCs didn't want to be known as rappers. Mm. There's a difference between being an MC and being a rapper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so an MC, which there's a lot of people that are today years old, still don't know what MC stands for. MC means master of ceremony, okay? And so the, 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 the iconic battles that I grew up with, we're talking KRS-One versus MC Shan. We are talking LL Cool J versus Cool Mo D. And they were, th these were the diss records that, that I grew up on. Hip hop was born in 1973. I was born in 1975. Hip hop is my first cousin. Mm. In in terms of musical genres, hip hop is my first cousin. And so, um, uh, we 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 grew up listening to these battles. Now, the disc records in the 80s, in the 90s, it turned into beef. We not just doing disc records, um, battle battle uh, uh, records um, for like who 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 got the best verses. Yep. Now we're now we're talking about if I see you on the street, I'm gonna kill you. Uh -huh. Right. So so now in in the in the nineties, you had it it became East Coast versus West Coast, gotcha. and obviously it culminated with two luminary figures mm -hmm. in. Um, Curtis Wallace and uh, Tupac Shakur, both of their lives being ended as young adults. This gets me mad every time. We talking about 24 and 25 year olds. Do you honestly think if these men were still alive, they would still be beefing? They would actually be doing a reunion tour. They probably have already done it. They'd have been doing a reunion tour and doing their diss records in front of each other. Mm -hmm. Because you get older and you live and you learn. Now, um, let me let me just th this is a this is a good thing to go down. So so um uh uh Nathan and I listened to uh Vultures. Um uh we li we listened to Vultures. Yeah. That's the album we listened to. Yeah. So Nathan and I and, uh, the, the agreement I have with Nathan is that if he wants to listen to secular music, we got to listen to it together. And then we have to process it. We listen to the whole album straight through. We talk highlights, lowlights. And process, where do you think this dude is? What, what do you think he's, what, what are we picking up on? Well, we're, 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 there's definitely lust here. Or there's definitely pride here. Or there's definitely arrogance here. There's definitely a lack of self-awareness here. There's definitely some hubris here that's driving this, that, and the other. Right? So we listen to Vultures. And um, we, we concluded that there are some, like Kanye's, he, he's in the sunken place a little bit lower than he was before, right? Then, then our conclusion was, man, we hope that we, we, we get the benefit of experiencing a Kanye who has had enough life to go, I messed up. Yeah. I messed some things up. Right. I messed some things up. 
Um, this is why I give uh, Sean Corey Carter uh, some credit for what I believe for me, for, for the time I've been on earth in my lifetime. I think one of the most important hip-hop albums of all time is 444 by Jay-Z. Uh, because never, uh, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, never has any MC that I've known live long enough to still be relevant enough to put out an album that would still be good enough for people to listen to just to hear him apologize to his wife and his kids for his indiscretions, for his infidelity. To have lived long enough to go, I made some mistakes. You listen to Kill Jay-Z, which is the first track on the album, and then you listen to 444, that's a man who's been to, to therapy. That's a man that's lived long enough to go, I don't know why I was out here pouring liquor on women and thinking I was a baller. Like, like, like you got to have, you, you, you need some time. Like, like hubris, hubris belongs to youth. Like, it, 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 that, that's the only people that should still have pride. Time should get that up out of you. You should have lived long enough and messed up enough and made enough mistakes to know that your doo-doo stink and that you ain't got it all together. Right. Whether you saved, unsaved. Nigga, I don't care if you are atheist. I don't care if you agnostics. I don't care if you Hindu. I don't care if you if, if if you're Jewish but don't believe in uh, Yeshua. Uh, I don't care if you are Harry Krishna or a Wiccan. Like like you like on a on a on a practical level, you should have just lived enough life to know I suck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have it all together. I have no problem saying that. You you should be able to say I got some weaknesses. Like, like life should do that on its own. I, I don't like I don't want to live my life without the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit convicts me of sin. Like I don't have to worry about <laughs> I don't have to worry about if you're if you're sensitive and attuned to the Holy Spirit, you ain't gotta worry about finding out uh if you got pride. He gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. Like you ain't gotta wait till your family and friends and your close and your friends start distancing themselves away from you and your girl don't wanna talk to you no more and you wondering why, man, why my boys don't wanna hang out with me around, but nobody was brave enough to tell you. Hey, bro, you, we, we, your attitude sucks. You ain't got to worry about that when you got the Holy Ghost. Because when you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit be like, hey, dude, take that back. <laughs> the Holy Spirit be like, hey, hey, watch your tone. I can't tell you how many times, Juliet and I have been married uh, 25 years May 1st. I cannot tell you how many times the Holy Spirit has said, go back and apologize to your wife. Your tone was off. I didn't come to that conclusion. I felt right good about myself after that exchange that we had that that heated exchange that we had right that heated fellowship and then an hour and an hour and 30 minutes later i'm back babe yeah i just want to apologize to you for my tone like the, let me tell you something the holy spirit let, let, hold on man let's 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 get to the book <laughs> let's get to the book hey i haven't lost my place on rappers either. Uh, uh, but but, and we'll get through all this, and then I'll share the reason why I brought it up. Oh, for so, sure. So you, can, I think I already know. So you can catch another wave. Absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. So so so, um, this is uh, yeah. Let me let me start from uh verse sixteen. So this is if, this is Galatians five. <laughs> Galatians five, starting at the sixteenth verse. Derek already knows what's about to pop. So uh, uh this is not. Um. Uh, Paul says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Okay. Bro, I can throw the phone out the window right now, just off Galatians 5, 16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what the Holy, uh, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. No, not one man, not none of us can thwart our sinful nature cravings without the Holy Spirit. Let's let, that, let's let that marinate real quick. I don't care what you find out here in these streets. I don't care what you find. I don't care what you think you don't do and won't do. Everybody got a sinful nature because you were born in it. And we all got cravings in that sinful nature. And the only way to not indulge in those is to let the Holy Spirit lead your life. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. 
And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Let, let me just marinate on this real quick. They're constantly fighting each other, which means constantly. I just want to let that marinate literally. We think that deliverance means I don't feel no temptations. I don't have no sinful urges. I don't have no sinful desires. That's not what freedom is. Freedom is the Krispy Kreme is still on the corner of 377 and Interstate 35, which means I'm going to come, I'm going to pass that street, get off on an exit before or after and, and loop around to my house. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to constantly be there if that's my, if, if that's my issue, okay? Uh, but when you are directed... Verse 18, but when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. And I'm about to read you this list. It's not a comprehensive list, but this is just top of mind stuff that's come into Paul's head and he writes it down. Okay. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. That's how you know it wasn't comprehensive. He just lists a bunch of stuff and says, and other stuff like this. Because he could have kept, Galatians would have been 52 chapters. <laughs> It would have been long. This chapter would have been longer than Psalms. <laughs> it would have been longer than Psalms 119. OK. Uh, let me tell you again, as I said before, anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do you understand the difference between living something and doing something? You could do something and not live it. But you can't live something and not do it. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody hold tension right now. We always talk about holding tension, right? Let me go back up to what he said. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. What is that telling you? Screaming loud. What is it saying to us, peeps? We talk about reading the text and, and having, and, and, and having a, 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 a sound doctrine around what we're reading. What does constantly fighting each other mean? You need to learn how to live in tension. Because your spirit's going to always be constantly fighting against your flesh. And your flesh is going to be constantly fighting against your spirit. So anyone living that sort of life. I, I, got, I, I got into a debate with a guy when I was on my book tour on Sirius XM. Uh, because of he, he, he wanted to ask me questions about... Um, uh, uh, the the lifestyle of homosexuality, and as we went through talking about that con that that um uh that conversation, he had a problem with what I said as related to scripture, and all I was saying is anyone that's practicing that type of sexual behavior is not pleasing God. In the same way. Anyone practicing heterosexual behavior outside of marriage is not pleasing God. Point blank, period. I do not care that you and your boyfriend are saved. But y'all live together and y'all have sex occasionally. You are not pleasing God. I do not care that y'all about to get married. I do not care. You are not pleasing God. Point blank, period. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you, but he ain't pleased with you. Stop playing, y'all. Y'all got, I'm, okay, I need everybody in the chat that got kids. Tell me, have you ever not been pleased with your kid and still loved him? I'll wait. Wait on the answer. Today's clip. I'm waiting on the answer. <laughs> Man. 
I need you to renew your post. Save your comment. What is your answer? What is your answer? Of course. Your kids do dumb stuff. You're not pleased. And you love them. And you think God can't? Let, let, let's stop acting like God is looking at us sinning and being pleased with it. Ooh. Yes, he loves you. Let, yes, there's grace. He's tired of seeing you watching porn and masturbating. Ooh. He's tired of it. I'm sorry. Does he love you through it? Yes. Does he want to catch you doing it? No. What are we talking about? Because he can see it. We think a loving God still, do, still doesn't hate sin. He does. And just because you won't get that wrath brought to your neck, thanks to Jesus, you think you can just try la 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 out here and keep on doing it and that there's no consequences. He's not telling you to do it not to be mean. He's telling you to do it so that your, your nervous system can regulate in the way that it was back in the Garden of Eden. He's trying to get you back to Genesis chapter number two. And they were naked and not ashamed. And you can't tell me that practicing sex outside of marriage, hetero, practicing sex outside of marriage, homo, practicing sex, out, practicing sex in marriage, male, male, female, female, is honoring God. It's not. He's not pleased. I'm sorry. He loves you and he's not pleased. And don't think I'm saying something to me that I haven't, that I haven't uh, said something to you that I haven't said to myself. I know when God has not been pleased with my actions, which is why I work so hard being submitted to the Holy Spirit and therapy to get freed from that stuff because it's bondage. You cannot enjoy your relationship with God while in bondage. And continuing to make excuses for it is not freedom. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle of habitual sin that needs to be broken. And unless you are ready to take a real good look at yourself and live in a completely new way with all the lights on, it ain't going to happen. So that's my, that's my thing. I'm not done reading the verses. I'm not done reading my verses. I'm going to read that last sentence again before I move on. Let me tell you again, as I, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse number 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Put a different way, you'll be hard pressed for the Holy Spirit to convict you because you love him, people. You will be hard pressed to get to come under the conviction of the Holy Spirit because you have joy, because you're at peace, because you have patience, because you are kind, because you're, you're, you're giving people goodness and you're expressing goodness, because you're faithful. Imagine being uh, uh, convicted by the Holy Spirit because I'm faithful. I'm faithful to my wife. I'm faithful at my job. Uh, uh, imagine being convicted by the Holy Spirit because I'm being gentle. Amen. Hey, as angry as I am, duly noted I heard what you said. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult conversation. I, I don't like how I feel right now. I don't like what you've said. I, you pretty much probably don't like what I'm said. Gentleness, just gentleness. Scripture says a soft word turns away wrath. A soft answer turns away wrath. You ain't got to clap back at, at anybody. And this is coming from a battle rapper, my niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Before I gave my life to Jesus, my tongue was sharp. I could end you. I don't play in my own house. Uh, 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 you know, when the, when, the, when the family teases each other and they're talking to each other and then my extended family comes over and sometimes they get to roasting each other, I never participate. Never, never once do I participate. Nate, I'm talking about um, when, I, when everybody's talking about each other in the family and uh -huh. bagging on each other and do I ever participate? No, you don't. <laughs> and here's the reason why I don't participate. I don't, I don't trust myself 
to stop because that battle rapper thing is still in me. And so if you get to, oh, you skinny nigga, look at you, buh, 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 or look at your hair, look like, I, I'm going to end you. And I'm like, I'm hitting below the belt. Like the first thing is off the off the rip below the belt. You haven't seen your mom since she was she was eleven. <laughs> since she was eleven, that's why your mom left. <laughs> like I, I'm, a, I'm, cause, I, and this is my family members. Let alone a stranger. If I won't, if I can't trust myself with my family, this is why this is why I can't clap back at nobody that give, that has a response video to me. I can't do it. I heard you mention one time you're like. I'll maim, I'll maim them with my response. <laughs> uh, they'll be in therapy for the rest of their life. Because I'm, I'm, hey, I'm just talking, I'm, I'm telling you about my flesh, because you got to know what your flesh can do, right? You know thyself. I wish that was a Bible verse, it's not. But you, you got to know yourself, right? I'm the type of person that if you said something about me, again, I was going to be a homicide detective. My response would come six months later. It's only going to take 40 or $50 to get a name search, an address, a private investigator. Private inge cause I got money. A private, inge a private investigator probably what? I don't know. If I want him to follow him for about maybe 90 days. Say I'm out three grand. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know what private investigators are. Say I'm out three grand. This 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 is the level of my petty. I'm I'm we about to we about to watch you for for ninety days. We we about to get footage for ninety days. We 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 are about to get bank records. It's evil. It's evil. And six months later, I'm gonna be like, hey, there was a person that said <laughs> by the name of porn history is this. Bankruptcy is that. Separation is this. Daughter is that. You're cheating. Son is this. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. And it's the op. That is. That, I, hey, let's go back up. Let's go back up. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. <laughs> That's why I got to constantly put that on the cross. You feel me? Paul did not say I was crucified with Christ. He said I am. <laughs> Present tense. And I think I made this statement. I don't know if I made this statement on the pod, but it's a statement that I, I know for a fact the Holy Spirit gave me, and I've been, I've been saying it a lot the last uh, week or two. I am tired of seeing people wear a cross around their neck and not have a cross behind their back. You're not supposed to wear the cross. You're supposed to be on a, on a cross. Mm -hmm. Those, thank you. Oh, my God, Holy Spirit. I could not believe this is the next verse after I said that. I promise you I was not looking down, didn't, didn't even realize this. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. You know what happens when I start talking like this? People start saying, brother, it's about love. It's all about love. And G D no, D Jesus paid the ultimate price. Yeah, but, but he going to need that change out of your pockets, fam. Let me give you this hood talk right now. It's, there's a pocket check, my nigga. It's a pocket. We, we patent in pockets. Po we patent pockets out here. <laughs> That's what we call it in the hood. We patent these pockets. Hey, bro, what you got on you, little homie? Hey, let me get a five. Let me get that. You give your life to Jesus Christ, he's starting to pat. He, he, you come into the relationship, he going to start patting pockets. Hey, homie. Hey, come off that, come off that pride real quick, little homie. Hey, dog, come off that lust real quick, huh? <laughs> hey, my nigga, I'm going to need that lust out your pocket, dog. Hey, homie, I'm going to need that porn stash, dog. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, homeboy. Phone check. Phone check, homie. Who's in your phone, Holmes? Let me switch it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me hit East LA and talk to my, my Bato Locos real quick. Hey, Holmes. 
Hey, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need to check those pockets. That's it. I need to check that phone, Holmes. Entiendes, Mendes? I need to check the. Hey, I need to check that phone, Holmes. Hey, primo. What's up, primo? I need to check the phone. I need to check that. I need to check that phone, Holmes. Hey, what have you been liking on IG, yes, eh? Hey, hey, in your IG, Holmes. What have you been talking about in your IG? Hey, hey, it's too much booty showing up on your Explorer page, Holmes. Hey, what is what is going on in your IG, Holmes? Hey, Vato. Vato Loco, let's go, ese. Let's go. You got to live this life, carnal. Are you going to live this life or not, ese? Like, like, bro, that's where I grew up, fam. Ain't nobody code switching for y'all. I'm giving you the gospel, the way I, the 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 way I've had to process it. This is how we live life. This is how we live this life. And y'all trying to get out here without a cross? How? How? It's not possible. Not possible. So all of that came out of a question about battle rapping. Please continue, Hector. <laughs> I love you, Tim. <laughs> Hey, bro, that was the wave. That was beautiful. That was a bro. wave, bro. That was beautiful. So I think the the main question I, I have, uh, or not really a question, just your thoughts. Um, J. Cole made a diss track. Yep. In response yep. to Kendrick's diss track. Yep. Originally, Cole was giving a flower saying in one of the songs, uh, the three goats right now are J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, bro, mm -hmm. we're those guys. Mm -hmm. Kendrick's like, no, it's just me. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He killed it. It was, it was fire. Yeah. And then Cole makes a whole album, releases it, and then goes on stage and apologizes because it says it was messing with his piece yeah. that he even made a diss track. Yep. So I wanted to hear what are your thoughts because everyone is clowning on Cole, saying that's whack, he's weak, and I'm like, I don't know. I wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. So I didn't. I I do know about this. Yeah. I commend J Cole. I do. Um, the humility it takes, especially in this arena, in this sport, because this is sport. Um, but, bro, you got to do whatever. Uh, um, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, <laughs> ain't no sense to me trying to act. Because here's the thing, bro. I didn't, I didn't come up with none of this stuff I be talking about. Uh, uh, let's see. Peace. Boom. Okay, so this is Romans. This is Romans twelve eighteen. If it be possible, this is King James, and then I'm gonna read it in NLT. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. If that ain't short and sweet, I don't know what is. Uh, NLT, Romans 12, 18. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Bottom line, everybody ain't doing all they can. <laughs> they barely trying. N nigga, I tried, but she just pushed me. You're like, you didn't try. You did. You, you tried with everything in you. Stop. J. Cole said, man, I want to sleep at night. I don't give a damn what y'all say about me. I want to sleep at night. And I made that diss track because it was the thing to do. This is my sport. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the way I felt. I didn't like the way I felt. I regret doing that. Self-aware, man. I should have just let homie have it. Yeah. Let him ride. Who, it, are people going to stop buying? Are J. Cole fans going to stop buying J. Cole albums because Kendrick dissed them? Did Lil Wayne stop using autotune when Jay-Z said death of autotune? Like, you know what I'm saying? Did, am I going to stop being a podcaster because somebody doesn't like the way I pod? Am I going to stop preaching because somebody don't like the way I preach? Like, you know what I'm saying? At some point, yeah. I got to be at a higher level. You are entitled to your opinion. 
You are entitled to your opinion. I don't like Tim Ross. You are entitled to that opinion. You ain't got to like me. But God loves me. The same God that you're talking about that died for your sins, died for mine. The same God that you're talking about that you think is on your side might be on my side too. Or maybe we both ain't on his side and we need to get on it. If you don't believe me, ask Joshua. Okay, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You, you, mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I know I'm feeling good today. Ooh. I know I'm feeling good today. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Joshua chapter number five, verse 13. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and demanded, are you friend or foe? Neither one. This is the pre-incarnate Jesus. This is Yeshua, pre-incarnate. Are you friend or foe? Neither one. Th Joshua, the son of Nun, is a Hebrew with origins back to Abraham. The promise pulled out of Gentile nations and made a new people to bring Christ in. The pre-incarnate Christ shows up in a back to the future moment and says, I ain't on your side or their side. I'm on my own side and you better be on mine. Are you friend or foe? I'm neither one, fam. Not fam, but <laughs> neither one, he replied. I am the commander of the Lord's army. Here's what he's telling. You thinking too low if you think I'm with you or them. I'm with me. I am. So you need to come over here with me. Don't think I'm with you, but you better be with me. What is the commandment to the disciples? What is the request to the disciples? Follow me. Not, hey, guys, what are y'all doing? Can I hang out with you? Nah, follow me. Philip under, uh, under a tree. Follow me. Levi slash Matthew at work. Follow me. Peter, James, John trying to fish. Follow me. That's the invitation. So I, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just in this space where I, 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 think, I think what J. Cole did is commendable. Mm -hmm. um, people going people gonna to say what they say, but remember, remember the context they're coming from. They're, from. they're coming from a carnal context. This is a man that wants peace in his life and peace with other men as well. He's a dope artist. He has a right to think him, Drake, and Kendrick can be named in the same sentence. And Kendrick has the right to think that he should be the only one in his sentence. Kendrick is still growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he might look back and disagree with himself. He might not. But he, he has a right to his perspective. He has a right to think the way he wants to think. And we all have a right to grow. We all have a right to change our mind. J. Cole does the diss record, then he changes his mind. We all have a right to change. I reserve the right to change my mind about anything I'm opinionated on. There's some stuff I can't change my mind on. I cannot change my mind on the fact that Jesus is, Christ, Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead. I can't change my mind on that. I can't change my mind all of a sudden and think Scripture don't mean what it says it does. I can't change my mind on that. And there's enough Scripture for a lot of us to be ten toes down in some stuff that the, somebody else might disagree with, and we're still in the body together. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So here's, here's one thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about the fact that too many people in the body of Christ are attempting to have out of body of Christ experiences. You know that you know that that statement out of body experience. Mm -hmm. I had an out of body experience. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ based on church hurt, deconstructionism and all this kind of stuff. They keep trying to have out of body experiences. Let me tell you what that's called as it relates to the kingdom. That's called becoming cancer. You're a rogue cell. You talk about these people that go like on ayahuasca trips. Yeah, that, like, 
yeah, I'm talking about the people that burn crystals and sage and 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 roll a blunt and yeah, think I'm more yeah. spiritual because I'm smoking weed and reading the Bible yeah. in Bible paper. Stop playing. Boom. Uh, 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 imagine, imagine the Holy Spirit falling in Acts chapter number two on Jews, Jews only. And <laughs> I don't know why I pointed like, that was like Jews only. He falls on Gentiles in Acts chapter number 10. That's when the Gentiles start getting uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. Imagine 2,000 or so years of raw Holy Ghost. And now you need to add sage. <laughs> I'm in my bag, homie. Imagine the Holy Ghost. The promise Jesus gives to bring the Spirit of God to come live on the inside of us, and it's been okay for 2,000 years, and all of a sudden you need a crystal. You need that, and a, you need the Holy Ghost and a horoscope. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that. You, you, you want a word from the Lord, and you want to know what the horoscope says to a Sagittarius. Make it make sense. You you want to you looking for a prophetic word from the Lord and you want to know, am I compatible with a Gemini? I'm praying that God would send me my soulmate, but he's a Taurus. I don't know if, based on the horoscope, if somebody walked up to me. And said, uh, when's your birthday? I said, June 26th. They said, oh, so you're a cancer. I said, I don't have it. She said, I, no, I'm talking about your sign. I was like, I don't. Only, only sign I have is the cross. I don't need another sign. Mm -hmm. I'd be damned if I let a horoscope tell me <laughs> what God himself wants to tell me. Everybody everybody's entitled to have their own God if they must. Only ours talks back. So we got all these idols that we've made. And we're doing all this foolishness. And it's just not even, I mean, what are we doing? It's not even worth it. So I, I need people to come back to the body and stop trying to keep having these out-of-body experiences. We were made for community. Mm -hmm. It is not good that man should be alone. Now, I'm not trying to, I'm not telling you if you got hurt in the church that you should stay in that church. But I'm telling you, the same place where you got hurt is the same place you're going to have to go to get healed. You can't get healed outside of the body. Maybe a part of your body hurt you. You're going to need another part of the body to heal you. You didn't stop going to restaurants when you got food poisoning. You just stopped going to that restaurant. We got to grow up now, y'all. Mm -hmm. Th that's what we on today. We on, this is some old grow, grow up stuff. I'll, sometimes I talk to the neophytes and the, and the babies and get on their level. And other times, this this is I'm in that, I'm in that. Yo, yeah, you you gotta you gotta you gotta grow up now. You gotta grow up now. You just can't be sitting up here still uh, making excuses for why you, you're, you're staying outside of the body. I just have my own personal relationship with the Lord. You know what happened when Judas uh, got hurt by Jesus? He wound up he wound up going to the wrong group of people. And when he got hurt by those people, he wound up by himself. And he wound up by himself to the point that he decided to uh, end his own life, which is terrible. Because he lost hope and he lost this, this he, 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 he lost hope and he lost that opportunity um, for restoration all because of a misunderstanding. He was disappointed by Jesus. Some of y'all's church, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of y'all's church hurt ain't got nothing to do uh, with actual hurt. It has to do with rebellion.
Lavina, uh, uh, good question. So let me clarify. Jesus, uh, we're not talking about we're, we're not talking about what Jesus did. We're talking about what Judas experienced. The way Judas experienced Jesus, he got his feelings hurt. It's not that Jesus tried to hurt Judas's feelings, but the way that J Judas experienced Jesus wound up getting his feelings hurt. Judas thought that Jesus and his lordship meant the overthrow of the Roman government. And when that did not happen, when he realized that that was not going to happen, he was so dejected, he was so depressed that he wound up betraying Jesus. He sold him over to Caiaphas and Ananias uh, for 30 pieces of silver. He regrets the decision almost instantly. He could have come back to Jesus with a, with, a, with a heart full of contrition and repented and been restored. Instead, he let despair and hopelessness drive him to ending his life. So sometimes the way we experienced the situation hurt us. It wasn't that the person uh, uh, intended to hurt us. Nevertheless, there were hurt feelings. But I'm saying some, some, there's some people calling stuff church hurt, and it wasn't church hurt. It was just the rules of the house. <laughs> you got some people claiming church hurt, and you, you actually could. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let, let me go to basketball right now, right? So, so we, we're officially in the playoffs now, right? My Lakers snuck into the eighth seed, and now they got to be in the play-in against the Pelicans, and then we'll see where we go from there. But um, uh, 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 imagine you uh, committing a, a flagrant two foul and then being mad at the refs for blowing the whistle on you and then saying, I ain't playing basketball again because I can't believe you blew the whistle on me. Nigga, it was a flagrant two foul. You karate chopped this dude when he was in midair. He almost came down and broke his neck. It was that much of an egregious foul. Some of us are actually calling our, our church hurt, are uh, uh, trying to ascribe it to somebody that was just enforcing the rules of the house. They told you, as long as you in this house, you can't preach in other churches. They ain't letting my gift flourish. They trying to they they trying to they they trying to stifle the gift that God gave me. No, no, they're not. They're trying to disciple you because you've only been saved eighteen minutes. Just because you got thirty three likes on your last Instagram post does not mean you're ready to be a revivalist. Ain't nobody trying to hurt you, nigga. You twenty two. Calm down. You got a lot of life left. They're trying, to, they, they, they're trying to make sure your inward parts can handle everything that's going to come uh, from your outward parts. All this gifting and charisma that we keep pumping out to the world from our churches and, and their character and integrity is half-baked. It's still soft in the middle. They can't handle a young lady smiling at them without them starting to say something inappropriate. And quiet is kept. There's a lot of young ladies out here in ministry too. Compromising their integrity just because the nigga smell good. Just because he said you look attractive today. And it ain't just men and women. It's men and men and women and women too. Again, I ain't got nothing to say for somebody that's outside of the church. I'm talking about what's in it. First Corinthians. Verse number 12. It isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders, but it is certain, but it certainly is your responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning. That's who I'm talking to. And I mention no names because I I, I don't, I can talk about the behavior. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, didn't Paul do that as well? Hmm, let's see. Start at verse nine, shall we? 
1 Corinthians 5 still. When I wrote to you before, I told you not to associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. But I wasn't talking about unbelievers who don't indulge in sexual sin or are greedy or cheat people or worship idols. You would, you would have to leave this world to avoid people like that. I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer yet indulges in sexual sin or is greedy or worships idols or is abusive or is a drunkard or cheats people. Don't even eat with such people. That's what we're talking about. I don't, I don't have people in my life that are my friends that live sinful lifestyles. I do have friends that have fallen into sin. <laughs> and under the conviction of the Holy Spirit or the protection of the Holy Spirit, to expose them, they have repented and asked God for forgiveness, and then we get to apply Galatians 6. We all over this book today. Dear brother, starting at the first verse, dear brothers and sisters, if any, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Ye which are spiritual, it says in, in, in King James, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thy own self, lest thy also be tempted. So I don't, I don't, I don't hang out with people that got a lifestyle of sin. But, but, but I, I do hang out with people that have sinned because I have to. We don't make it a lifestyle. When the Holy Spirit shows us what it is, we, we repent quick. Ain't nobody out here like, well, let me just hang out in, let me just hang out in Sinville for a month. <laughs> I know some people that have fallen and gotten up. The holiness people, boy, they hate that song. They hated Donnie for that one. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down. But we get up, we fall down, but we get up. And a saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up singing for me. And then we fall down, we get up, we fall down, but we get up, we fall down, but we get up. And a saint is just a sinner who fell down. And got a hey, so so yeah, everybody thought that song sucked. No, not everybody, but the the holiness people thought that's uh, thought that song sucked. Um, and like, cause they thought we think we we think if we acknowledge sin, we're giving people permission to sin. It's just not, we can't live with that type of fear. I don't live with the fear of sinning. I just know that if I if I do fall down that I have an advocate with my father, that I can come boldly to the throne of grace and I can, I can confess my sins. I can talk to him directly. Um, uh, uh, let me see. Let me pull up this first. Okay. Because a lot of people get scared about these type of verses. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, this is the one I'm looking for. Oh, verse. There it is. Uh, Proverbs 24, 16. Uh, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Uh, 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 uh. And uh, let me see, Proverbs 24. I want, I want to read it in NLT. 24, 16. 
The godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. You could trip all over yourself. But like, be progressing. <laughs> like, be learning. Like, oh, I, how did I get caught slipping there? Oh, okay. I need to, all right, I need to watch out for that. I don't need to. I got a, I got, I got like 30-something pair of Air Max 90, 97s. But one of the pair I got, the colorway is so fire, but it but it's a golf. It's actually the bottom is is not like the other sneakers. It's actually like a cleated, a golf cleat. I can't wear those on certain surfaces. I will literally slide. It doesn't have the same grip as the other shoes. So when I put those shoes on, I must be careful how I walk. In those shoes, completely different than other shoes just because of the way the soul is. There are some positions that you can step into. There are some roles that the enemy, that, that God tells you to step into and you have to watch the way you walk when you are wearing that position, when you are in that role. It doesn't mean you get to walk and like do like, no, you just gotta walk a little bit more. As a pastor, I had to walk differently than I can walk as a podcaster. Nobody ever heard me talk like this until I was a podcaster. Why? That, that, this, this cadence of communication is not appropriate for a pulpit. So now there's some people that don't want me back in their pulpit because of the cadence communication I have, on, because of the cadence of communication I have on my couch. There's, there's a fear that if this is the cadence of communication on his couch, maybe he'll bring that to the pulpit. Fam, you had me in your pulpit for 27 years. What gave you the impression that I would ever give you that? Because you did get it in the green room. So let's not act brand new. Let's not act all the way brand new. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's not act that surprised. Don't do that. Rip me out the plastic. <laughs> so, um, that's good. We commend J. Cole. We commend J. We, we do. <laughs> we commend J. Cole. <laughs> yeah, we commend J. Cole. We really do. He's a good man. He's a good man. So, um, yeah. What the people them talking about right now? Discord peeps, send some voice messages in. Let's get it. We're just vibing right now until they send something. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. For a saint, that about I turned that thing into a bop. Hey. <laughs> For a saint is just a sinner who fell down. I got one that's typed up um, from La Vena. May we type in a question today? Question mark. So sweet. Yeah. Um, if so, I'm writing. Uh, I'm reading the Old Testament. What does prophesying mean? The Spirit came on Saul and his men, and they prophesied. Mm -hmm. So, 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 uh, prophecy. A uh, quick explanation of prophecy. Prophecy is. Um, a word given from God um, that speaks to a future event. When you look in the New Testament and you see the gifts that the, the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives, one is prophecy, one is word of knowledge. A lot of people confuse these two. Actually, we usually call everything a prophetic word. Um, when some of it is actually a word of knowledge. So a, prof so a prophecy, to prophesy, means to speak about something that has not happened yet. That's a prophetic word. A word of knowledge speaks to something that has happened or is happening. So a word of knowledge addresses past and present, that's a word of knowledge because you shouldn't know that detail. But but to prophesy something is to speak to the future of the thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So um, Ezekiel 37, anybody that's been in church knows that that is a, a good um, a good revival passage. So, uh, 
Let, let me just read it from the beginning. Um, uh, 37, uh, verse number one. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with dry bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? O sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the dry bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message. Again, a prophetic message speaks to, the, speaks to what's going to happen. I spoke this message, just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then I watched, uh, then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message, again, another prophetic message, to the wind, son of man. Uh, speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, uh, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying we have become old dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. So these are all prophetic words. Again, prophecy speaks to, I love you, bro. It's good to see you. Uh, prophecy speaks to what is coming and word of knowledge speaks to past and to present. So I hope that helps. It's the most succinct way that I could, that I could give it. We got one from Leanne. And she has a, her profile photo right there. You can see she's with your book. It's just adorable. That's the, that's the homie right there. It's just adorable. Yep. Hey, Tim. Um, I have a question about, I have been walking with Jesus for one year now, and I've been consistently going to church seven months, and I was kind of commanded to just jump head first. I'm on a team. I lead a Bible study, but... It's been a couple of months, well, really it's been since New Year's that I'm struggling with feeling like uh, the best thing I can, like, say is I watch my toddler son and it feels like I'm walking and running and using all this energy and I'm not eating solids yet because they're just giving me milk. Um, and so I just want to know should I start looking for another church where there's more in-depth conversation or should I continue to just try and be obedient where I'm at? Yeah. So my answer um, will either be really good for you or frustrate you more. <laughs> um, when, when it comes to moving churches, I need a word from the Lord. The same Lord that led me to the church has to lead me away from it. And and listen, if you're growing and your appetite is changing, that's actually a good sign. Here's what I would say. Maybe it's not for you to leave the church. Maybe you just need a supplement. In the same way with our diet, we could be on a certain type of diet and we might need supplements because based on the diet we're on, we may be lacking nutrients in another area and we just need to get that from somewhere else. I can't tell you how many people when I was a lead pastor, attended another church, but they referred to our church as vitamin E. So they got their vitamin E from us. The name of the church was called Embassy, so don't think they just made up a vitamin, right? It could have been D, B, B, whatever, whatever. But, but they called it vitamin E because the, the, um, the, what they were getting from us, they did not get from their church but that's where God had assigned them. So I, I always want the Holy Spirit to lead. Um, I, I consider all churches to be pastures where God leads his sheep to feed. 
I see them as pastors. And when you get done feeding in a certain pasture, the Holy Spirit might move you on. Now, I, I don't know what the rhythm and cadence of most people's lives are with a church. I've only been a part of four churches my entire life. I'll be 49 in June. I've only been a part of four churches. <laughs> like, so there ain't no church hopping here. You, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, what 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 is that average? That average is what, 10.3 years or something like that? 10.2 and a half, 10.3 years uh, that I stay at a church. So um, I don't do a lot of hopping. There has been times, uh, there has been seasons where my diet changed and I'm listening to my pastor and I'm still getting something from him, but I'm, I'm just missing a little something. And we just live in a culture now where you can go get it. You know what I'm saying? G.E. Patterson is still my favorite preacher on the planet. That man is dead. And I'm still going to be listening. I'm still going to be listening to all of his stuff. Uh, for the rest of my life, because that man is just my favorite preacher. My 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 whole family is my whole family on the raw side is Kojic, and that is how that is how I um was raised, and so that's all I'm gonna be listening to for the rest of my life. So you you if you feel like that season's up, start praying into that. If you ask the Holy Spirit, hey, is my season up? If He says no then maybe it's time to start serving in that capacity. You've already fed, you've grown, and maybe you need to start serving in a capacity that just makes it better. So I hope that helps. It does help, and I was going to say uh, we could go to our, our short little break where I have some music vibing as we prep for a little surprise for the dwellers. If you're down, unless if you want to go straight into it, uh, we, we a short break with music. We, we, whatever you, you, you want. Giving, you giving intermissions. Yeah, now? Just Th this is hilarious. They could go use the restroom, like, and get some popcorn, whatever. That is hilarious, it was bro. A submission. I, I <laughs> clearly thrown out the window. Oh, yo, I, that, no, it's it's just. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm just thinking. I'm like, what is the, what would be the reason for that? But, uh, I am. I we we just we we just chilling. I I can't wait to. Uh. I can't I can't wait to 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 just vibe. This is just a, this is just fun for me. <laughs> Look, I'm so hype. I'm so hype. I'm so hype. I'm so hype. I, I I just I just feel like the Lord just is. He's just putting like little. You know when a dad lovingly kisses his son on the forehead or his daughter on the forehead and you just like oh my goodness that's how i feel with with the type of people that god is just allowing us to sit down with it, it means the world i'm about to I'm, I'm about to go ham i'm about to go ham all right all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. okay okay I'm, I'm just getting my i'm just getting my uh-uh not a no not the twerking sponge bob sponge, like, it, okay. yeah it's that's that's different the twerking SpongeBob got me weak. So we 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 okay, I'm gonna do a formal introduction and then we'll get into all the things we wanna get into. Okay, so um you know, right? So anyway, right, so you know, like we've been doing the lives, right? But then when we've been doing the lives, right, like sometimes people come on the lives, and so it don't just be me. Um, some people just be coming through and then when they come through, then it's like, oh, that was live. So it's a live, but then when they came through, it made it live. So <sighs> I'm doing all this for me. This ain't got I'm just doing this to get my own nerves good, and then I'm going to be all right. All right, so um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, um, we have a treat. This is a treat for me. Um, you've heard this woman's voice. Uh, you've heard this mu woman's music, um, and um, now we just get to hear from this woman talking, and I'm just so happy about it. I, I, um, how do I even set this up? Uh, this person is Grammy nominated. Um, this person uh, has uh, given literally soundtracks to seasons of our lives and and you'll have context to that uh in a minute and the fact that she has decided to grace us with her presence just 
does my heart good. So um, I am going to uh, introduce to some uh, and present to others uh, for the first time, hopefully not the last. Tina Campbell is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go! What's going on? First of all, that introduced to some and present to others. Present to some and introduce that was that that church that I'm introduction churchy. have blessed me huh. indeed. Did it and bless you indeed? Listen with a T. That was wonderful. <laughs> Man, I'm good. What's going on? I love you. Oh, I love you back and congratulations on all of this. Thank I think you. the last time I seen you and we chopped it up, yeah. you was pastor. Yeah, we was. Yeah, yeah we were think? at a marriage conference. Yeah. Yeah, we were at a marriage conference. Yep. And uh, at OCBF, Oak Cliff mm -hmm. Bible Fellowship, the, the great Dr. Tony Evans. The great doctor. The great doctor. Come and on. Um, yeah, now I'm podcasting. It's kind of like weird. You, just, you listen and, you, and doing it well. Thank you. How it's, about that? It's, it's, I, 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 I used to say I'm 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 still getting used to it. I'm I'm used to it now, but mm -hmm. it still feels surreal. Yeah. That this is my life. Yeah. That's surreal. I think it's it's it you know, when when we're in the the when we're in the process of transition, it's like what what is really what is really going on? Yeah. But I think all that God is all that's all that's waiting for us at the next stop, everything that we're in right now is preparing us for it yeah and then and then we're like god what are you doing like you know with all due respect god what are you doing yes where, where am i what, yeah, what is yeah, yeah. this now and, and i don't like feel like no dang fish out of water right right you right know what i'm saying yeah and then you get you get there and you're like oh thanks you you believed in me like that wow like you you waited for me through all of my foolishness and then you just give me what you wanted me to have and qualify me to do it mm. sorry and thanks okay so it sounds like you can identify with this. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. All right. So, so, so. Oh my goodness. I, I'm just curious. I need to know this because um, I don't sit down with many people and talk about that part that can as easily and readily go. Oh no, I know exactly what that is. Mm -hmm. So, can you talk to me about specifically the when you get called to that transition cuz the thing that I, that I'm that I'm very acquainted with at this point Tina is that like you say yes before you know what you're actually getting into that submission and and if you don't submit to God you don't get to resist the devil if you don't submit to God, you don't get all that comes with humbling yourself before him and submitting to him. I'm sorry, but I have to ask for a napkin. Of course. The air is making me a little watery over here. Yeah. And you know, you know, I'm a girl, so we like to be cute. And I can't be over here like sniffing. <laughs> Understood. Like, wiping noses and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. But, but I got to do something. Okay. Um, but, you you know, if if you knew where God was going, then you would be his equal. You know what I mean? You would be his, you would be his, I don't know, co-producer. Um, and God doesn't have a team. He just, he has servants. He has children. Um, um, you get to be on his team, but it's his team. And so, um, so you say yes. You say yes because you trust his sovereignty. You say yes because you know that his thoughts are far higher than yours are. You know that his ways don't be making sense to us, but he made us. You can't think his thoughts. He came up with you and all that makes you who you are inside and outside. And that great gift that you really impressed with, with yourself yeah, he passed that out to countless people and been doing it way before you ever got here. And so you just say yes and you go along for the ride. And it's not comfortable and it's not convenient. Nobody likes being in an unfamiliar space. And when you've lived a life, okay, so am I, because I, I might be answering this question too long. Am I, am I good? Okay. So, so especially when you've lived life, you was a whole entire pastor for several years, a whole ministry doing well. I've been whole entire Mary, Mary. Like, you know, yeah. you know, the world has known me because of that. I went from that to television and to all of these things. And then I did a solo project after the devil tried to devastate my life, but God made it a testimony. Um, I didn't see myself doing that again. I was like, oh, me being solo just kind of came out of my testimony. And, you know, fine, God. But, you know, I'm Mary Mary. And when I finished, you know, being fully, you know, yeah. preoccupied with my kids, 
I'll get back to that. I didn't plan to do a solo project again. I didn't plan for a lot that is to come. And right now, it is a bit uncomfortable for me because Mary Mary, I know. Right, <laughs> Paul, absolutely. I know, know, right? <laughs> Paul, I know Jesus, I know, but who are you? Um, you know, but yeah. going into these new spaces and, and, and making moves and making decisions where it's like, I don't know where I'm going. It is not easy to do, especially in the middle of your life, because in the middle of your life, you want to feel like I've succeeded, I'm established. It's, you know, we're supposed to be over here on autopilot, like killing a game. That's right. Like, right yeah, in no, the way. You get to be like 20 again. You get to be fresh out of college again, figuring it all out. I'm like, God, I'm raising kids. I can't be figuring it out. I'm trying to teach them how to figure it out. Like, God, I've succeeded. I worked hard to get here. I mean, thank you for the gifts that you gave me. You know, the whole platform, just basically you orchestrated the whole thing. But God, we we went on and did that. Yeah. Like, while we got to do something else and I got to be over here lost and clueless and living by faith. I live by faith to get here. Now, I got what faith has created. We got to start back over and be clueless. It's, it's not always wonderful but it's purposeful and it'll be a it'll be a massive blessing if you just trust God I think about so many stages and phases of my life when I didn't know what I was gonna do I thought I was gonna die I didn't know how it was gonna turn out and I look back at it because it's back there yeah because God brought me through and gave me a testimony and helped me to grow and I'm better because of it and so when I reflect on who God has always been and how trustworthy he's always been and how superior his way of doing things is wisdom dictates since we over here halfway in, in yeah. the middle of our life yeah. wisdom dictates go with God yep. you, you make your plans yep. but go on and follow the path that he has yep. and it is not easy especially when you got to face you and figure you out and address the you that you don't really love you don't really want nobody to, to know about I just kind of want to focus on you know I'm gifted I got really good intentions I mean well I pray a lot I repent a lot Let's focus on that. No, let's focus on the part that you're not dealing with that won't be able to go to the next level. And you got to do that in the middle of your life while you're trying to teach teenagers how to be and you realize you didn't actually figure it out too well. It's, it's not wonderful, but it's purposeful. And it's a blessing when you get to that purpose place. So, you know, I'm in a land of discomfort right now. And I ain't always this confident about it. Sometimes I'll be kicking and screaming and hollering. Thank you. Thank you. I, and sometimes I'll be like, come on, guy. You don't think this too long for somebody to have to wait through this? I got to keep on praying for this. Why do I have to? Why can't we just put some things together? So my faith dictated that we got what we needed to move to the next point. Do we have to be blind? Do we have to be over here blind? God, is that is that exactly what you calling for? But then we all want great faith. We all want to look at them Hebrew boys. Mm -hmm. We always want to look at them Hebrew boys, right? Guess what the Hebrew boys got to get for their great faith? Fired. The fiery furnace. <laughs> they got fire. I'm exclusive to God. <laughs> I'm rocking with Jesus. No, uh, yeah, I'm rocking with Jesus no matter what. I ain't bowing. And if God don't even get us up out of here, we know we can't, and we trust that. Cool. Get on up in there. Oh, oh well, you know, I thought God was going to have a little intervention. <laughs> you see my great display of, you know, of exclusivity. Of Did you see that allegiance that I had, God? Didn't that mean something? You know, so I'm over here like, yeah, you see the way I'm holding down for God? He going to come through for me. He going to come through while you in that fire. Because there's a different kind of trust that you develop when you're in the fire. Escaping, I mean, why does he say, count it all joy when you get to go through all these various trials and temptations? Why? Because you're going to get to develop some, some patience and some endurance. You're going to get to learn how to trust me while you're waiting for me. And when you finish doing that, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make you perfect and entire, lacking nothing. So we want to be perfect. We want to be entire. We want to lack nothing. We just don't want the process that it takes to get there. So we go kicking and screaming. But thank God we at least get to kick and scream as long as we're going. So I kick and scream a lot of days. But I'm going. I literally just feel like you came out of the multiverse. And that you were just me as a girl. You and, did this all just happen? And just recap my last two years, like right in, oh. like almost burst into tears. Like I'm on the verge of tears, right? Like I cannot believe you just sat here and literally just said my last two years. That's what you just did. And I'm not, I'm not okay in the best way. You literally just ran down my last two years. God is faithful. God is faithful. 
I Dang. um I have a song coming out on my uh, my new project. It's uh-huh. not finished yet. Uh huh. Uh-huh. You know, and I, and what's crazy is this project of mine. I'm you know I don't be trying to do these shameless plugs and whatever. That's uh, that's do, not my. I don't get down like that. Do them. But 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 <laughs> my songs are my stories. Like they real. They real. This like I should have called the record this personal the third time around because <laughs> my music. They're they're my prayers. It's my confidence in God. It's what I've gotten from Him mm. while I'm sitting on my knees. God speaks to me through music. And there's a song, this one I'm actually doing with um, Erica. It's going to be Tina Campbell featuring Erica. <laughs> um, but <laughs> the song says, you're faithful, faithful. You have been faithful. I can't, uh, uh, I can't deny you've been faithful. Faithful, you have been faithful every time. Um, and I can't remember exactly, but the, the, uh, the lyrics say something about like, something about the, some, something, something happened, something about the last time. Said that I was dying, mm-hmm. but I'm still alive. Mm. How cl- quickly we forget how you loved me and you carried me before. Mm. And you're still that same God. Mm. And you'll do it once more. Like God is literally mm-hmm. faithful mm-hmm. in is. this inconsistent world. Mm-hmm. And we are part of those inconsistencies. Yep. He is the constant. Yep. Like he literally is the same yesterday, today, today. And forever because he's faithful yep. and he's loving. Yep. He is a an, an amazing father. He does not abandon his children. Don't uh, you may I don't, I'm, I'm not going to ask that question because I don't know if we should talk about that. But you know, if you love your children, you'll discipline them. Absolutely. Whatever your discipline happens to oh, be. Oh, for sure. I spanked you know, And I'm old school, so yeah, there's that. Yeah, we whooped them. Well, you know. I'm, and now they do military stuff. You come come on, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Just sit up and hold this book for, mm-hmm. for ten minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, not three for ten. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. hold it up. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, huh? Listen. Get them arms up. up. Lift it. Lift <laughs> it. Lift it. <laughs> I want to see sh- trembling shoulder caps. Is what there I want to see. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see the muscles forming while you're holding it. <laughs> That's exactly. But the thing is this. If you love them, you're going to teach them. That's right. If you love them, you're willing for them to hate you right now, not be feeling you right now. As long as I don't sit up here and screw up your life because I didn't train you right. and, and position you to be able to live it well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like with absolutely. God's help. Yep. Are we supposed to train? If God's telling us you're supposed to train up the child the way that they're supposed to go, what you think he's doing with his children? He's training us. And we discipline in our children, and God disciplines us at times. Like, you didn't learn that lesson. Right. So I'm going to let your own choices yeah. land you in the fire. Yeah. But I'm going to be in there with you. Yeah. Then I'm going to get you out of there. Yeah. And I'm going to let the world see it. Yeah. And they're going to have faith because you lost your way and you found it in me. You had to be in the fire. But all of them finna get saved. All of them are about to be drawn to me because you was in the fire. So the thing about God, he's just, he really is a good father. And if, he, if, 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 he's, if he's going to be that good father that he's helping us to be, we're going to have to be in some situations where we feel like, God, you done left me. You ain't listening to nobody. You ain't answering nobody. You ain't sending somebody to, 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 cause I'm, I'm over here lost and clueless and I'm discouraged. Sometimes he just want us, you get to be alone with me. Mm-hmm. You defaulting to those people too much. Mm. You seek them too much. They mm. become a replacement for me. So mm. now I love you so much. Mm. You're my baby, mm-hmm. my baby. Mm-hmm. I, it's time for you to be with your daddy. Mm. And thank you for aunties and uncles mm. and church leaders, saints mm. and friends. Mm. They're not me. Yep. I need you to see me. Yep. And sometimes when you see them, instead of seeing me, you depend on them. I want your dependency to be on me. Yep. So I'm letting you go through it so you can grow through it. And you can be assured that I'm a good father and I'm your father. And I love you and I'm committed to you, more committed to you and your life and your purpose more than you ever could be. Because I'm, God is for God. Heard, I think I heard some preachers or some say, God is for God. He's for him. He's for him. So he's going to sit up there and let your life fail while it's in his hands? He's going to make himself look bad? He ain't never going to do that. He ain't never going to do that. He's going to make it all work together for your good and for his glory. So this is, you know, this is the stage and the season that I'm that I'm that I'm in and today is a good day so I can testify about it and, <laughs> and smile about it but it don't it ain't always like this I'll yeah, be mad sure. like yeah, come on sure. God I've been praying too long and I think maybe I'm mad at you a little bit because is this fair how long do somebody get to pray and then I go back to well you know you made Abraham wait 25 years is that what you finna do with me you know what I'm saying like he you he the father of faith right clearly right, I ain't gonna be a him so you know <laughs> right, God right. his timeline should be he he on some different stuff. Right, you know, we, right, right. we hit we we descended to him. Right. Now that we, we you know, we're yeah. we're, we're uh uh engrafted. Brought, engrafted into the faith. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that I know I'm not finna be him, so my timeline should be a little different. And I just feel like you just got me out here. You know what I mean? 
But again, I'm reminded of Abraham. You waited all that time. Did exactly what you said. Yep. Exactly what you said. Yep. Now we over here to seize of Abraham because of faith. So I, I just, you know, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning. And this stuff that I be going through in my life is teaching me what nothing else would teach. If God gave me what I wanted, I would not have learned what I've learned to be here. And I wouldn't be qualified to be where God is taking me to. So he is it since he's the one that's qualifying you, he gets to come up with all of the processes of the qualification, all the requirements. Right. And you just, if you're smart, you submit to it. Yeah. Kicking and screaming. Yeah. If you, if that's how it has to be. Yeah. But do it. Lest you be over there swole. (laughs) (laughs) To toe up. Listen, Tina came in here full. You know how the Bible says, and Jesus came full of grace and truth. (laughs) Tina Campbell walked up in here. Fool. The chat said, we're trying to keep up, Tina. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yo. In a good way, you're on fire. I'm yeah. trying to keep up. God did something in the last 24 hours. I came on the trip that I'm on, kicking and screaming. I came on the trip mad at my husband. I came on the trip irritated with my kids. I came on the trip wanting to cancel what I was going to because enough of it wasn't in order. I didn't have my itinerary the way I wanted to have all my details. I I can't like I ain't got to do this. Just you know, I like to keep my word, but sometimes you just need to cancel. Like I I just came out and I and I had to repent for arrogance. Like get my stuff together. Mm, who you think you mm. wait, who you think you are? First of all, arrogance is one of the things that God hates. Do you really want to do what God hates? Why are you over there feel like get my stuff together? Who who are are you? Ain't you that girl that grew up on welfare? And you over here with a worldwide platform? Now you demanding that folks get your stuff together? Like mistakes can't happen? Delays can't happen? Things can't be imperfect? Who do you think you are? You got a platform that you never could have dreamed of. You got an income that some people on their richest day, it's your brokest day. And you over here arrogant. And I can't take this. You can't? No, you can't take this. Maybe you can't take all. Maybe you can't. You ask for all of this. You're praying for all of this and you want all of this. But maybe you can't take all of this. Because with all them blessings, it's going to come some some bumps in the road. Can you take the bumps in the road to come with all these blessings that you didn't even know to ask God for? So, you know, these are the things that God has been reminding me of on just this trip. This trip, wondering, are you, are you with this marriage or I'm just with it? And where he at? And are you going to even help me with these kids or do I got to keep seeming like the mean mama that's hollering and screaming and teaching them something that they ain't never learning? And then you come somewhere and God makes it plain by the kid that's sitting next to your kid. <laughs> you don't know that God brought you here so that kid can influence your kid over breakfast. And what you've been teaching him since he was seven, he didn't get until he was 11 at breakfast with your friends in San Antonio. Because I know the plans that I have for you. <laughs> Man, God been out here, God. The conversation that me and my husband, when he been out here, God, and the conversation that me and my husband had on the way here is the conversation I've been wanting to have for years. For years. For years. For years. I didn't know that I had to be out here for God to orchestrate that. So this is all the stuff I've been experiencing on the way to your couch. (laughs) 24 hours or 72 hours. God is so faithful. He is so faithful. He's so faithful. A lot of people be wondering, well, you be talking too much. You got to testify. You got to tell everything. I can't keep it to myself. I'm sorry. Like Jeremiah said, it's like fire. Like, I be strong and wrong. I've been on reality TV, for Christ's sake. A lot of people know my dirt. And then God cleans up your dirt and you're going to be quiet? I can't be quiet. Maybe it isn't for everybody, but whoever it is for, if you have been discour- as discouraged as I have been, if you, if you have been as hopeless as I have been, if you has, have just been feel like the wind is knocked out of you and you keep making the wrong impression and you keep being misunderstood and it keeps being hard and God gets you past that to grow in faith. And of course the devil is waiting to try to find something else to discourage me. But you know what? Today I'm excited about what God has done today. Mm -hmm. 
today, when I think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I could be out there unsaved. I could have divorced my husband and might not be smiling like this right now. My kids could have been over there dealing with the struggles that I had because my mother and father was married and divorced and married and divorced and married and divorced. And while I'm think, sitting up here thinking that I'm failing in front of my kids because we have we struggling with communication, maybe my kids is learning faith by watching us fight. Maybe my, our children is learning. Maybe our children are learning faith by watching us transition in the middle of our life when we have very impressive resumes, and now we're trying to not necessarily start over, but pivot and figure yeah. out how God wants to do what He wants to do right now. Because we're not who we used to be. He's 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 doing something now. He's doing a new thing. Maybe our children are learning how to 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 pivot and how to transition through the stages of their life in years and years to come. Because they're watching us, even though we frustrated and thinking we fell in that parenting. Because we're so busy being frustrated that we can't even be the love of God around the house. You never know. And then God gets you through that with a conversation. And he can go and do in a, in a day what you couldn't do in 10 years, like literally. Facts. Like one of the testimonies. I'm, am I ta I'm talking too much, huh? Okay. I bet you not. Okay, I, I got to tell you just one not. thing. <laughs> so, so my husband and I went through infidelity in our marriage and all that kind of stuff, right? And all of that was expressed on the TV show. And I'm so grateful that God, you know, we had a big massive test and humiliation looked like failure. And God brought that thing back together. Like he turned it around in a year, right? So my biggest concern was not the TV. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm a celebrity, right? I'm a celebrated person. I'm a popular person. How did I get here? Because then people celebrated me and they praised me and they supported me and they did all of this stuff. So if you are uh, 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 if you are subject to public praise and public uh, exaltation, you are subject to public uh, scrutiny scrutiny and all that. Scandal. They can drop you as quick as they done drop lifted you, you drag up, you. all that, right? Yep. <laughs> right? So that wasn't my concern, yep. right? Because... I'm not into celebrity like yeah, that. Like absolutely. I'm just, I'm just not that girl, right? Yeah. Um, I just want to be great at whatever I do, mm -hmm. and that's what's important to me. So I'm the same girl at the White House that I, as I am at church. Mm -hmm. I am clearly um, like on the red carpet <laughs> as I am with my homegirls. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I'm over here thinking, like, how is this gonna affect our kids? What statement is this gonna make about God, and what statement is this gonna make to these kids about God and family? That's all I care about. Like I can go out there and fail, yeah. as long as they don't fail, right? Yeah. So my, my daughter, who was 10 at the time, um, and she knew exactly what was going on. She was old enough to know what was going on. The other ones may have been younger. I don't know. I mean, they may have, may have been aware. Right. Not, they, they didn't really express it. They, mm -hmm. they knew that there was tension between daddy and mommy. But this 10-year-old knew exactly what was going on. Let me tell you how fresh God is. So she watching me and her daddy pursue God. She knows something went wrong because I heard some hollering and screaming in that mirror that was in there. I ain't in there no more. Mm -hmm. And he came back with a big trash bag. So I, and I heard some shout out. So I know some things went down. Mm -hmm. But y'all watching us pray for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Weeks and months and all of this kind of stuff. So one day we kiss our kids before we do morning kisses every time they head to school. So they're coming to kiss me and all that. And my baby leaves me a, a piece of paper with something she's trying to show me. And I'm thinking, I love you, sugar, but I'm asleep. Mommy going to see it when she gets up. So I get up and I look over and glance over and look at this little picture or whatever it is that my baby uh, made for me, right? Because I used to stay up all night praying after I finished with them. I stay up all night praying, studying the Bible. So I'm going to sleep a little later. I look at this little old letter, little picture, whatever it is that my kid done, done made for me, right? It was a heart with some wings on the outside of it. And I think like a happy face or something like that in the middle. And somewhere on the top or the bottom, she put love always wins. So I read it and like my heart leapt. I, I was like, is this baby saying what I think she's saying? Because I had to explain to her what infidelity was. Right. Like when I'm trying to tell her about women's bodies and all that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah. this child went and popped a question like, is that what happened? And I was like, <laughs> I, would, I just wanted to tell you about the birds and the bees and how your <laughs> right, body work. I wasn't right, trying to answer no questions right, about what right, we're going through. Right, Not right, at 10, right, right? Right, right. So this child, so when she gets home, because I was like, I want to be clear on what she's saying. And again, I'm over here like, oh, God, mm -hmm. what kind of impression am I leaving on these kids about God? She comes home, and I was like, love always wins, baby. What, what, is, what is that about? She was like, you know, you know, you and daddy, like, you guys were fighting and things were wrong, but you guys are, like, praying and fasting together and, like, Loving each other and all that. So, you know, love always wins. I see it. We don't went through <laughs> infidelity publicly. We got a whole reality show where the world gets to see our family supposedly fall apart. This kid is in the house. So she sees, she, she may, she, 
kids may you may try to shield them from what's going on, but they know for sure. Like you, the house ain't that soundproof. Right, right, we right. did some sound, but it ain't that <laughs> yeah, sound. Yeah, for sure. They hear stuff cracking and bumping. They hearing some yeah, stuff. They yeah. hearing words. They yep. may not be able to make it out. Yep. This child has lived this and lived in this tension, but she sees God bigger than all of that hell her family just lived through. She's seeing what God is doing. She's seeing praying. She's seeing fasting. She's seeing hugging. She's seeing kissing. She's seeing conversation. She sees an effort. She's seeing that love conquers all. So while the devil is over here tormenting me with you, look what you just did to your kids. Now you and your husband ruined your kids because you messed up. You went and, and stole their faith. They ain't going to have none no more. Why? Because you just showed them that God ain't worth it because he can't keep your families together and you ain't going to do nothing but end up in embarrassment and shame anyway. So I'm over here like I am trying not to ruminate over this kind of stuff, but I'm ruminating over what might I have done to my kids. Like, and I'm an angry black woman now because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to heal, but I ain't. it's taking mm -hmm. time. And like, what, what kind of impression am I going to leave on this kid? Mm -hmm. But because I was hidden... He that dwelleth in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the... I'm under God's shadow. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking she's seeing the darkness that's in my life. She's seeing the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. And she's saying that his love wins. You know what I see? Pursuing God gets you through anything. You know what I see? Loving in spite of, love actually does cover. So God has shown me so many times that if you put this in my hands, I will blow your mind. Wow. You just be uncomfortable. But your mind going to get blown if you stay in my hands. So that's what God, that's the, one of the things that, so this trip and thinking about times like that, thinking about, you know, my husband and I are approaching 24 years of marriage. The infidelity happened. 24 carat marriage hey, in the air. Hey, hey, listen. Head to toe, so play it. Hey. Look out. Hey, uh, I uh, love it. Uh, uh, uh. But Let's that was go. 13 years in when we went through that. Yep. But I mean, we still, we made it. Yes, we you made did. It. We made it. Yeah. And we're able to testify and help somebody else to make it. Yeah. So every time I think about stuff like that, these uncomfortable stages yep. and all of that, I look back and like, you know, remember when you was going to die the last time and you didn't die? Remember when you was going to lose your mind the last time and you didn't lose it? Remember when everything was going to go to hell in a handbag and it didn't? Stick with God, he got you. So... <sighs> <laughs> You you are an extravagant gift right here, right now. Like, for real, for real. And what y'all can't see off camera is that Teddy right here. So we ain't we ain't talking about no, like, she came in here by herself and gave his testimony and, well, he ain't here. Not that you always got to travel together and all that kind of stuff, but that man is right here. Posted up, relaxed. <laughs> body language says my nervous system is at peace and completely regulated Listen, the, the only thing I need to do is get him an ottoman to kick his legs completely up <laughs> that would be it it's, it's, it's a beautiful thank you for the gift of your vulnerability actually both of y'all's because that was public um, but I'm telling you like it's an extravagant gift to hear somebody in real time say what you're saying like a 24 hour testimony that hits different from like it's a little different this time last year yeah if you would have known what god had me go this time last night <laughs> this 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 time last night <laughs> i'm talking about at 6 10 p.m last night is what i'm talking about this when god was out here being great yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that that i'm a little bit fired up that level of I could feel it. I'm an empath. So I'm like, this fullness is coming from somewhere. I'm like, did this girl just get out the threshing floor? Did she just get out the war room? Did she <laughs> did she go from the threshing floor to the war room and then put on the prayer mantle and a sweater and then blow a shofar? And then, <laughs> it's the and sweater then get for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm I thank you. Cause these you're giving cheat codes to people that the enemy is convincing that where they currently are is where they're going to stay. He's a liar. He's a liar. Nobody has. Okay, so the thing is, 
most people's gift can be a curse if it's in the wrong hands. Facts. You put your gifts in God's hands. Yep. It is a blessing to you and everyone. Yep. You put your gifts in the devil's hand. You could end up in jail, yep. dead, yep. hell, yep. all that, like ruining your whole situation. And so God has given me a gift. My husband says to me sometimes, you are one of the greatest encouragers that mm. I've ever experienced in my life. Mm. But when you ain't on that encouraging end, your words cut deeper than a knife. Um, this is the multiverse. This is what I was talking about for an hour before yeah. you came in here. This, this, that's the unfortunate thing. Yeah. This gift ain't always been yielded. Yeah. Well, we ain't listen. So the ministry of 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 of, of the, the ministry of tongues, mm -hmm. uh, if you <laughs> if you will, mm -hmm. uh, you know. The, no, the that's so churchy. If you will, sis, sis, sis has been over here getting it wrong a lot. Understood. Like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, because it it takes time to be sanctified. It takes time to live holy. Yeah, you've been given a gift. You've been given a gift of communication. But yeah. if you don't submit that gift to God, you will ruin it. Facts. You will you will be on course, and God will get you to where you want to be, and you will lose your way because you'll be over there believing in yourself too much. Yep. And so I don't got too much confidence in myself. Understood. And God did that for me. Amen. I thought at first he was doing that to me. He did that for me. He did that for me. He helped me out. To believe in yourself, I, you know, there, hold on. Just to some degree, but then to some degree not. You, you don't need to be too aware of yourself. I think the greater awareness that you have of God, that's going to be your best self. That's going to be your best self. Like this is the one who created you in his hands. It's just That's going to be the best that you can ever be. And so... You know, this, this, you're trying to, trying to be my best. And mm -mm, I have gotten it so wrong. I have used this gift so wrong yep. in my own household. I have wreaked havoc and left casualties. But because of the faithfulness of God and his ultimate plan for our lives, he will take your foolish self, your imperfect self. And I got to say this to whoever it is, I feel like, you done messed up or you done jacked up. And I've been on drugs a lot of years. And I've been out here being a hoe in front of my daughters. Now I don't want them to be a hoe. And I've been a horrible father. And I don't want nobody to do that to my daughter. Whatever your issues are, you done been over there. You've been handling money way, way, way wrong. And what you know, you done handled the ministry wrong. Whatever your thing, whatever your thing is, you've been out here living a double life. You know what I'm saying? Like you got some secret, secret, dark, dark, like very, very evil stuff that's a part of your life. God can take whatever you are. Whoever you are, whatever you have done, and he can shift that thing and turn that thing and perfect those things that concern you and use that for his glory, for your testimony to bring other people into his kingdom and to glorify him. Like you literally just put your stuff in God's hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some people think like I've done too much. You ain't never done too much. Yeah. You ain't never. You keep doing it. He'll turn you over to them things and then you be stuck. You be swole. So you don't want to do that. You don't, when you don't feel no conviction no more, be very, very concerned. You feel very confident in your little sin, be very, very concerned. Because if God leave you over there, now you're stuck with the devil. Now you're really finna be towed up. You're going to have your, your years and your time to shine, and then you're going to be tormented, and then you're going to get to be in torment forever. But just surrender your stuff. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. I mean, my life got, quote, unquote, ruined in front of the whole world. And guess what came out of that? A marriage ministry where people trust me, where I got credibility. I don't have no, I don't got no, no letters behind my name. Don't I, you need know, them. singer, songwriter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now all of a sudden, people really, really consider and value what me and my husband say about marriage because the devil tried to ruin us because of our bad choices, because yeah. of our own choices. The devil tried to ruin us and make a mockery of God. And God flipped that thing and made us a testimony for his glory. So God could take your stuff. He could take your stuff. I don't care what you have mishandled. I don't care what sins, what crimes you have committed. Yes, God still loves you. Yes, he is still waiting for you. Yes, if you surrender yourself to him, he can take your life and make something good of it. Let's consider Apostle Paul. Let's consider him then. <laughs> Yes. He out there getting the Christians killed up. And watching it. Listen, 
Listen. This nigga's watching it. He out here wa- he out here <laughs> he out here facilitating and fostering it. Let's bring these. They've been over here breaking the rules and breaking the laws. Let's kill them. Let's, let's Yeah, let's absolutely. Yeah, for sure. This is what he's doing. Yeah. Right? Yes. He has a chance meeting or a divine meeting with God, right? Yep. He gets blinded. Yep. Then he gets saved. Yep. Then he gets sanctified. Yep. Filled with the Holy Ghost and yep. that with fire. Mm-hmm. Now God makes him the apostle, his representative yep. to all of the non-Jews yep. of the world. Yep. He took the dirty man, yep. the self-righteous man, yep. the one that is causing Christians to be killed yep. because of their faith. Yep. And now God made him his representative as a sanctified and purified Christian. If God could take him, if God could have Peter as one of his apostles and not fire him and he over here cussing like crazy got a foul mouth he over here god's like i'm gonna build my church on you right you over here doubting you over here fooling you ain't got no self-control god's like i'm gonna build my church on you and then after he says that you deny him still cursing i told you i don't know so and so and so and so that's what the bible said the bible said he cursed about it you understand what i'm saying and then god still keeps his promise take this ticking time bomb time bomb this guy who has no self-control and God says, you, but you're going to be all right in my hands. And I'm still going to build my church on you. And when you walk past these people, I'm going to heal them. That's how much power you're going to have. Your shadow going to get them together. They're going to be over here twisted up. And when you walk by, they're going to they gonna stand up straight. But you just got through cursing the other day. A couple years ago, you just got through. A few weeks back, you just got through doing all of that. But if you put yourself in my hands, watch me make something good of it. Don't you ever let the devil tell you. Don't you ever let him tell you. What God can't do with you, what God won't do for you. God can do any and everything with whoever he chooses. All we got to do is come to him. Because if you come to him, he's going to meet you right there. And he's going to do something with your life. And he's going to make something good of it. And then you can look back in the last 24 hours and say, let me tell you what God did. I was back there doubting. I ain't had no faith. I was cussing. I was mad. I was doubting him. I told him I was angry. I was about to leave him. Then I changed my mind. Mm. And then in 24 hours, when I came kicking and screaming, Look what he did with my life. And you might not get that 24 hours because my last 24 hours have not been my last 24 days. Understood. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, just the last the last yep. 24 hours, God wanted to show me some things. Yep. It's been a challenging year. It's been a challenging seven years. Yep. Oh, but God. Oh, but If you God. just hang on in there. Hang on. Listen, hang on in there with the Lord. And so, I'm sorry, I, I am a little bit turned up because I'm like, God, you really did? I came out here all but cursing. I wasn't cursing you. but I was on the verge of cursing him and them kids. Sick of all of it. Sick of all y'all. And shut up. <laughs> all that. You know what I mean? And shut up. You know? <laughs> Almost made me pee on myself. <laughs> <laughs> and shut Listen, up. Listen, <laughs> and you bring and you and you bring me out here and you and you show me that, baby, just, baby, just breathe, sugar. You know how you tell your kids breathe, because yep. they be a little anxious, especially yep. when they teen it. Just you tell me, breathe, sh- baby, hush, hush, shh, shh. talking too much, and talk yourself into another disaster. Just mm. be quiet, mm. be quiet. I have something to say. And I tell you, I got you. Be quiet. Your husband is going to talk to you. Listen this time. He's about to give you some revelation that I'm about to give him about y'all kids that you stressing about. He got peace and you mad at him for having peace while you just stressed about the kids because you think his peace means he don't care <sighs> what you want him to be, the wife or the husband, which one. And that's no slight because I know the women and, the, you know, the, y'all don't get attacked by the women and all that kind of stuff. But God, I, I don't, you know, my sisters and all that kind of stuff, you know, and I'm a boss and all that kind of stuff. Me too. That's great. And but God, <laughs> God has order. God has order. He created the spirit of Adam and Eve at the same time, but he created the flesh of that Adam first. And then he said, after you out here running everything, you still need some help. I'm trying to figure out, well, what did he really need help with? Maybe he just needed some moral support. Somebody to say something soft, somebody to rub his back. Somebody to bring him pleasure. I don't I don't really know, you know, all the things. But God put the work on him. He put the weight on him. You know what I'm saying? And so when he's, if God is putting the weight on him, he's giving him something that he's not giving you. Now, you know, husbands can submit to what God is giving or not. But when God is doing it, you over there mad? You over there mad because he in control and you out of control? <laughs> you over there mad because he he's at peace and you not? Then you want a man? You got one, accept it. 
Like these are these are all of the things that God has been showing me after a, a week of complaining. Thank you, Father. You show me that in a car ride from San Antonio to where you are. Yes, I came in here very turned up. I'm just like, man, God, look at you. Okay. I am, I am, I have a heart filled with gratitude right now that God would trust your turn up on our couch. You could have went anywhere. From San Antonio, y'all could have went to some conference, some big at, oh, big church. <laughs> the fact that it that it crescendos here and our community gets to celebrate with y'all is um, something I don't take for granted. I don't take it for granted at all. Neither do I, bro. This was not even on the schedule. I don't even think like one full week ago. <laughs> We're supposed to be going to Baton Rouge. We're supposed to be going to Houston. And what we were supposed to be doing here when we decided to come here is not happening. And then things just started, quote unquote, pop, pop, popping up. But nothing pop up, pops up. Mm -mm. Nothing just happens by chance. Mm -mm. Our lives are divinely orchestrated by Absolutely God. Absolutely correct. And just watching his divine orchestration just wows you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when you just sit back and take it in, you be like, you be out here god big time you don't need no the, the song said god don't need no matches he fire all by himself like he out here fire that don't, song that it, it, i like god it. don't need no matches I like fire it. all by himself god don't need no matches i like it fire all by himself. Oh, god don't need no matches fire all by i himself. like it oh, god don't need no matches i fire just feel like this song no, no, no. yeah i was like this song ignorant i get it now. until until <laughs> until I get it. Like he Until. don't, he don't need no help. God needs me. No, God can use you, but God don't need. That's right. You. That's right. He could use you. Absolutely. Uh, and he has need of you. He, you could be useful in God's hands. Absolutely. And if you not, there can be another you in a minute, baby. He, he, God got options. He's God all by himself. And it's so wonderful when you get to experience yes. it. And sometimes it's after the discomfort and, right. the, and the feeling lost, feeling mm -hmm. confused, feeling like you have failed, you've fallen and you've been humiliated and you're ashamed and everybody knows your dirt and you got to rebuild and people are looking at you and everybody's talking and God still proves himself amidst all of that. You want great faith? Now you got it. You just had to go through there to get it. Just like the Hebrew boys had they fire, you had to have yours. So so here's the the song that is lodged in my head that I'm recapping your 24 hours. Be still and know yeah. that I am God. Listen. Be still and know. That I am God, be still and know that I am God. It's the, that's it. That's the whole song. <laughs> Let me give it to you the way Mary Mary said it. What do I got to do to make you understand that I want what's best for you? And I always have, but maybe you're confused about who I really am. Stand still and know I'm God. Stand still. Stand still. You're doing too much. I be doing too <laughs> much. Oh, my God. Tina, stop. I be doing, I be doing the most. You know them kids that be like muchy, like, baby, baby, stop, breathe. Because watching you is making me tired. I'm her. And I'm very grown. I'm, I'm still. I'm it's the, the self-awareness for me. It's mm -hmm. the self-awareness for me. 
It's the self awareness yeah, for me. I'm still, I'm still her. Like, how you gonna teach Mila and TJ and Santana them to stop being that? You still that, okay? You're training them with your life. You mm. fix you first, and then you go get them some instruction. After you get it, you get you some self control. You do that. You be quiet. You stop interrupting people while while they talking. You do that. You be nice, cause you ain't nice. You do that, man. I be over here doing the most. <laughs> And the fact that God ain't threw me away. Oh, no. You over here still loving me and still using me? Yeah. You gonna choose the clown over there? You know she'll be over there acting a clown. You gonna choose me anyway? You gonna, you gonna still keep loving me? I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Why do I still have a platform in relevant spaces? Yeah. Who's doing that? Not you. This is not anything that I can orchestrate. Mm-mm. So the fact that God thinks enough of me to still choose me and use me, and he's more aware of of all that I am, but the awareness that I have disqualifies me to be used by him. But again, that's that loving father. Yeah. Like you're my kid and yep. I know what you're made Absolutely of. correct. Man, what you, what you going to do with that? Like I've been over here doing too much and you still over here want to use somebody, want to rock with somebody, want to keep qualifying somebody and anointing somebody. That's why I can't stop talking. I probably, I feel like I've been talking too much, even on, even though it's a talking thing. I feel like I've been having too much to say, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna try to stop. I, I'm gonna in- strongly encourage you not to. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a whole career like talking too much, and so I'm very aware like you be talking too much, babe. So, so, so you talked about. I, I promise you, I feel like this is a parallel universe situation because everything that you have talked about since you sat on that couch is what I talked about for an hour before you came and sat on this couch. Shut up. Cap, no cap. When I tell you everything, I'm 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 literally sitting here thinking like, okay, okay, we just uh, we're definitely just playing in the same sandbox. Like you just, she was already in the sandbox. She was just on the other side of the playground, and then she came over here. So then you think. So then I I, I consider something like that, and I think about who is it that God cares so much about that part? Who is it's it? A yay and amen. Who does he love so much? Yeah, that he wants him to hear it. He wants them to hear it is from he, a male perspective and then a female perspective. Like, just, we ain't chatted for years, right? Years. For years. Like, so, when we talk about trusting God, this is how the Holy Spirit operates. Just be orchestrating stuff. You ain't got to figure it out. Nope. You don't have to have answers. Nope. Just surrender. Right. And he'll be great. That's what he does. That's right. That's what he's, he can't not be great. That's, that's who he is. Yeah. And so, I'm thinking... Who is it that God wanted to hear this? Yeah. Who is it that's been watching the whole time and they were struggling in their faith? Yep. Maybe they had a little faith, but it's some they saw some help my I believe help my unbelief. That's you know right. what I'm saying? What if God just really wanted someone to know I'm talking I'm to you? I'm talking to you. You. Yeah. I love that, you so much. I'm talking to you. That's what he's done yeah, to me. Absolutely. Like I don't I have generally not learned the lesson the first time. Um I'm I'm the kind that need a few opportunities. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna say it to you once, but well, well, no, that ain't been my life. It, right. I kind of have to see it thirty to forty times, maybe. <laughs> um, but because God loves you so much, He will keep teaching you until you learn. Because sometimes God knows you want to get it. Yeah. Sometime God knows you are struggling. Sometime God knows something that was handed to you in, in the family line, something that was handed to you from something that happened early is a, has been a lifelong struggle, but it's been a struggle because you're not comfortable in it. You don't want to stay there. Mm-hmm. You don't want to just live there. You land there often, yeah. but you don't want to live there. Absolutely. And God knows it. Yeah. God knows it. And that's not making excuses for sin and, 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 and making room for compromise or anything. God knows what your struggles are. Yeah. But because he, he says, if you search for me with your whole heart, right, you keep on asking, you keep on knocking, yep. you keep, keep on, on seeking, seeking. That's right. You gonna find me. Yep. I'm gonna answer. This door is gonna come open. Yeah. So you just gotta stay at it, and God wants you to know. He's maybe regurgitating the same thing because he wants to know that he's with you and yep. that he's for you. And if he is for you, nothing, your past, your excuses, the devil's lies. Their laughter, no one's belief in you, lack of resources. If God is for you, none of that is going. I, I'm disqualified. I'm not qualified. I don't have enough. I don't know enough. Who gonna help me? If God is for you, yep. none of that stuff matters. Here I go trying again. None of that stuff is going to stand against you. So who wouldn't love a God like this? It keeps giving you chance after chance. Y'all, whoever this is that needed to hear this twice. 
two different ways. Don't miss what God is trying to do for you, not to you. He loves you so much. He wants you to learn and grow through this. So, so go on and receive that opportunity to learn and grow through this. Folks don't be wanting to give folks that second chances, but God stay giving them. There you go telling me yes again. Yep. There you go. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Oh, <laughs> there you go yeah. telling me <laughs> yes again. Listen. That's what this is. Yep. So y'all have gotten a yay and amen, a verily, verily, a merry, merry, <laughs> a Timmy and Tina and Teddy. Y'all, what are we, what, what are y'all doing? What are you, just say, just say yes. Just say yes. Like in the middle of your no, say yes. In the middle of your no. That is nice. In the middle of your no. In the middle of just your no. Just change say, your mind. Yeah, in the middle of your no, just you say can. yes. Yeah, just just in the middle of your no. You said no and just say yes. Just say yes. But I said no already. And then you can just say yes. Yeah. You get to. <laughs> you get you to. You get to change you, your mind. You get to. Is this not everything we just... I literally said... Okay, I'm going to stop. Yes. Amen. Yes. Okay. Yes. If y'all can't see what's happening here, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. That's just the bottom line. <sighs> Bishop Tim. So <laughs> we can do lunch or we can take questions on the Discord. What would you like to do, my love? I'm just so full right now. I know, I feel full too. Like, I have meat that they know not of. A berry smoothie downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is literally not meat. So <laughs> But I, I'm 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 uh no, I don't I don't wanna Q and A this. Like I just think what Tina has given us, um, I wouldn't wanna break from that. So when 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 we're done with this delightful conversation, we'll be done with the pod. Cause I mean, if God hasn't spoken, I don't even know. Like, this is one of them moments. This has happened to me several times in ministry. You're preaching your message. You, you, there's a moment of exhortation. And then literally the Holy Spirit's like, and you're done. <laughs> and then you're like, church is going bananas. Mm -hmm. I mean, look over at the organist and they're like, <laughs> tell Do me, I? tell me. <laughs> just, just and, and say then, the word. And, and then the Holy Spirit's like, "If Be you said anything in. else, I'm leaving." That part. Y'all can stay. You can have a praise break if you want to. I'm leaving. <laughs> like I'm done. I'm done talking. If you want to say something else, but I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm I won't be here for it. Knock yourself on out. But yeah. that's gonna be you knocking your own self. Yeah, cell exactly. Out. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we had church. Yes, y'all did. <laughs> I left. <right? laughs> so that's how I feel about this moment. This is the if 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 yeah. This is this is that. This is the martini shot when you get done, you know, with the final scene of the movie. Like, it, the, call the cast up and tell them all, "Great job, season's over. It's a wrap." I don't. There's not that. That's straight no chaser. There's nothing else to add to that. Except thank you. Oh, to God be the glory. Thank you. And That's I was it. wondering, what, what we, what we going you know, what we gonna talk about? And my guy, like, what, what, what we talking about? <laughs> what we gonna talk about? This is the second podcast that I've done today. That this not, well, we, we'll figure it out. Mm. And what's crazy is, I be nervous, cause I talk a lot. Mm. And what you just said, I have did a lot of talking, where God was there and He left, and I kept talking, and I messed up what God was trying to do. I was nervous. I was nervous. I was like, God, I don't want to mess it up. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that you keep, for me, this extended platform for all of these years um, that we used to pay me and Erica or by ourselves. I mean, you pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every month. You pay somebody to orchestrate and to, 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 yeah. to, to, to get these opportunities yeah, 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 for, yeah. for you. Yeah. 
the opportunities that God has been getting since we ain't paying nobody to do nothing just blows my mind. I ain't looking for nothing. I ain't got nobody for you to even call to see if I can be available for the opportunity. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. he's doing random schedules. I'm, I'm in San Antonio. Let's go somewhere nearby afterwards or whatever. And God just puts things together and put you in spaces for you to speak. Like, I'm mature enough now at least to know, don't you take an opportunity that God has given you to make his name great to make his presence known and do you don't you dare do that. And don't you add to nothing that the Holy spirit is doing because the Holy spirit is complete all by himself. When he's speaking, you speak when he's done. So are you Lest you mess up what God just did. Now folks done lost the faith because you kept talking. Mm. All right, so so I'm going to submit to you what I feel like I heard the Holy Spirit say. Um, and I'm, I'm submitting it to you in front of your husband, and it could be that I'm hungry, or it could be that it was the Lord, or it could just be I'm emotional. But here, here's what I felt like I heard him say. When alone, talk a little. When out. And about in moments like this, when God gives you platforms, talk a lot. Received. Received. Home life, talk a little. <laughs> Platform, talk a lot. That's how God is flipping the gift that he gave you. Your, your self-consciousness to talk a lot. It was in the wrong space. He didn't He didn't give you a lot of words for private. He gave you a lot of words for public. You were just putting them in the wrong spot. Tina doesn't talk too much. She was talking too much in the wrong in the wrong place. At the crib. Talk a little. Yeah. On the platform, talk a lot. Cause all this talking you just did was a lot, and it was edifying, and we needed every we needed every ounce of it. That's right. So I'm just admitting that. And he brought me here to get that. Wow. Isn't he kind? <laughs> I you I needed to hear that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing. I say often. And I may have been ensnared by these words because um, I should be talking a little at the crib. I've said often, I don't care about nothing outside of this house. Like I care, but not that much. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, you know, I'm vested, but only so much. Why? People have the choice to do whatever it is that they want to do with their lives. I don't have any control. I don't have any authority. And my say so doesn't matter much. My words don't go far outside of the house. But the problem has been that I have had a misunderstanding of my authority and influence mm. at my own house. Mm. So I've been misusing it mm. over here, trying to be my husband's and my kids, Holy ghost and savior. <laughs> when I ain't died on no <laughs> cross and it ain't my spirit that hovered over the deep. And I'm just saying, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't the one that knows all things and it's the helper and <laughs> right, we, ain't, we ain't the producer right. of fruit or none of that. But right, I'll be right, over right. here like, well, God, you know, God gonna use me to help and like doing too too much mm -hmm. and I've and I've known that and it's like you know you're supposed to pull back it was just you're trying to figure out how this works mm. and like you just this man has said that a lot I was like you just don't want to hear me talk like all husbands want their wives to shut up mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. and if I had have been walking in the spirit I probably would have known that man is wise beyond his years he don't say much when he says something listen and what's crazy is he's right there while you're saying what he has said, but just the way that it was packaged. And after all of this, he knows how nervous I was. Mm -hmm. I was like, be nervous at the crib <laughs> that you're going to say something that God wants him to mm -hmm. say or that God doesn't want said. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I love you. Love, love you back, man. I'm so grateful you came. I'm, I'm so, so grateful, grateful that came. I came. Hey, this is the chef's kiss. I'm done. Yeah. That there's nothing else to say. Thank you so much for coming. When does your album come out? 
Um, Testify is coming out in in June. Oh, it's coming sweet. out in June. This is but beautiful. I have a single out now. It's called oh, Pray for Me. Okay. It's called Pray for Me. And it's a basically an ode, a tribute to everybody who has prayed for me. I know that, you know, I, 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 I'm a, a firm believer that, you know, prayer changes things. Yeah. Um, that God honors it and God answers it. And sometimes you're not able to do it for yourself. Yeah. But because they are praying, praying people and their prayers are accomplishing much. You have gone through and gotten through. You might not be in jail, dead, or hell because right. somebody else was praying. Absolutely. And so this song is an ode to listen. Thank y'all. Yeah. Thank y'all. Now it's a it's a banger. It's yeah, a yeah. Bop. yeah. 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 You oh, know what I mean? That's all. That's but that's listen, what you're, that's it's consistent. Over there talking about like when saints start praying, things start changing. Yeah, and so for pray sure. for me is out right now. Okay. But the the project testify is coming. In June, and we're awesome. gonna be testifying. Yes, we are. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Listen, so rise on up and say so. That clap <laughs> <laughs> out of my peripheral when I t it was the Mother? round up. I never you know, even fully looked. I saw all like, of this out of my just, peripheral, and I am just weak. A missionary Baptist <laughs> church mother. Just, it was a whole lift up. <laughs> the there could have been got, pizza dough in there. There could have been the antics money and shenanigans and such. Oh Teddy be over there fooling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank thank y'all so much for being with us. I'm telling you. If you didn't, if you didn't hear it today, I'm not sure you're gonna hear it. God's not done; it's not over. Say yes, and until next time, deuces. Press B with me, and let's let whatever gon' be just be. Uh, yeah. So press B with me, and let's let whatever gon' be just be. 